Welcome to Predatory Publishing, Criteria to Evaluate Journal Legitimacy. My name is Tabitha Octeros. I am the Electronic Resources Librarian here at Malloy College. I am also the Administrator for both Digital Commons at Malloy and the Expert Gallery Suite. Before we get started, there are several resources that I suggest you use before watching this video. First, if you have not already done so, I suggest you view the copyright and publishing videos. Second, on the Scholarly Publishers Toolkit LibGuide, there is a page for journal ranking and impact. It would be most helpful if you viewed that page speaking about journal rankings and impact before you view this video. So what is predatory publishing? This is tricky because there's no standard definition. The definition that follows I created from a bunch of academic sources, including other institutions' libguides. Predatory publishing is an exploitative business model that charges publication fees to authors without checking the articles for legitimacy or quality, and while neglecting other aspects of the publishing model, such as peer review and the editorial process. It could also be called unethical publishing, writer-only publishing, or deceptive publishing. It most often affects open access academic publishing. The term predatory publishing was actually coined by academics based on the idea that authors were being tricked into publishing in poor quality or fraudulent journals. Something to keep in mind as you begin to evaluate a journal for legitimacy is that low quality publishing does not automatically equal deceptive or predatory publishing. What does that mean? That means that a journal's website could look very plain but function correctly and have high quality information. That also means that a journal's website could look super fancy, none of the links could work, and it could have low quality information. Yes, I am a librarian and I am telling you not to judge a book by its cover. This is why we have a list of criteria for you to check. And very similar to how librarians instruct undergraduate students to evaluate websites, there's also a list of criteria to evaluate journal legitimacy. Here at Malloy, we teach undergraduates the CRAP test. I don't have a fancy acronym for predatory journals, but we will look at a lot of the same things. A few of those things that you always want to check first are impact factors, journal rankings, the professionalism of the website, so checking for any website mechanical errors like dead links or grammatical errors, the use of generic email accounts, no contact information or inaccurate contact information, clear policies on copyright licensing, open access, the article processing charges or author fees should not be unreasonably high or unreasonably low, and the journal should make proper use of permanent identifiers such as ISSN or DOI. Using that as the starting off point, let's see some other red flags that could pop up during your evaluation. Email solicitations. I don't say this to be mean, but unless you are already highly well known in your field, it is very unlikely that a journal is going to contact you first. So keep that in mind. 
the origins of the journal should match the title in some way. So if it claims to be international, you should see other information on the website that backs up that claim. The title is the same or similar to a well-known legitimate journal. That is a huge red flag and does happen sometimes with open access titles. The journal is an open access title that claims to be indexed in the directory of open access journals, but it is not. Website mechanics. Always check things like links. If you click on a link that says editorial process, you should be brought to a page that has information on the editorial process. Unrealistic promises. If the journal promises that from submission through editorial, through peer review to publication takes less than 45 days, that is a very unrealistic promise. Is there anything unclear on the website? This could be policies like copyright. It could be a description of processes like peer review the scope of the journal, information about the editors, contact information, accessing the journal, archiving the journal. If there is anything unclear on the website and there is no one to clarify it, that is a red flag. If the title is not listed in the directory of open access journals, Earl Rick's web, or if the publisher is not listed with the OASPA, which is the Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association, those again are red flags. Keep in mind that these three organizations do have criteria for their lists. The criteria are listed somewhere on their website. So a new journal might not be listed because it has not gone through that process yet. Is the journal on a blacklist? There are a few blacklists out there on the internet. The first one started in 2012. It is known as Beale's List. It was created by Jeffrey Beale, a librarian at the University of Colorado, Denver and he was a critic of open access publishing. There were a lot of pluses and some controversy surrounding Beale's list, and it was ultimately taken down in January of 2017. That being said, you can still find an archived copy of it on the web, and many of the newer blacklists or predatory publisher lists do turn back to Beale's List as their starting point. The red flags are the things that you don't want to see. Green flags are best practices or things that you do want to see. Starting with the title is unique. The title points to the origins, so if it says it's international, the journal is actually international and the title points to the scope. That scope is well-defined and discipline-specific. The website mechanics. Remember, not the way it looks. You're not judging fancy versus plain. Website mechanics are things like spelling grammatical errors. You want to make sure all of the links work so you're not getting any 404 or 504 errors and the link you click should take you to the information that is stated. Peer review policy should take you to information on the peer review policy. Contact information should be clear, all links working. There should be a section on accessing the article and journal and how they archive. Permanent identifiers should be used correctly. So ISSN for the journal itself, 
and DOI for the individual articles. You want clarity. As much of the information as possible should be clear. Editor and editorial information, governing body, if there's an association tied to the journal, the copyright policy, access and archives policy, licensing, the peer review process, any author fees or article processing charges. You want all of that information to be clear. If there are other revenue sources or advertising, that should also be listed somewhere. Moving on to an example. I was asked in fall of 2016 if the Madrid Journal of Nursing was predatory. This question came from a faculty member to their subject librarian, and the librarian passed it off to me. I used the criteria that I listed previously in this video, and I came to the conclusion that this particular publication was kind of sketchy. So in my opinion, it was predatory and I would not have published in it. The screenshot that you're seeing, that black bar in the middle of the slide, that was a screenshot of the bottom of the journal's website. So I scrolled all the way down to the bottom of the page. All of the links on the right hand side under this quick links section were not functioning. And it wasn't that they brought me to an error message or an error page. It wasn't that they brought me to a different page. None of these words were hyperlinked, so they didn't bring me anywhere. And that's information that you do want to be access, at, access as a potential author looking to publish. I want to know the guidelines. I want to know the policies. Um, that and other criteria made me decide that I thought this was predatory. Has it changed? So I looked at the journal in fall of 2016. It is now summer of 2019. I've rechecked it. They did have a website update. But the journal is still not listed in any of those places. So Ehrlich's web, web, the Directory of Open Access Journal, the Directory of Nursing Journals, which would be helpful since this is a nursing title. So you do want to look for discipline-specific resources when you are doing your evaluation. It's not indexed in PubMed or Web of Science. The publisher is not listed with the OASPA, and I actually found it on this list of predatory publishers at predatoryjournals.com. When I revisited the website, there had been some changes. There is now an archive that goes back to 2016 because the journal was created in 2016. The peer review process link does not work. It still does not work. So there were other links under that quick link section that work now, but not that one. Also, something that I came across was this page, madrid.org slash indexing, and it looks like this. And this is supposedly all of the places that this journal is indexed. I have an issue with this. Let's start going through them. So Crossref and DOI deal with permanent identifiers. As a librarian, I would not consider them indexes. It is not listed in Road, not listed in Scilet, not listed in ResearchBib. It is in WorldCat. It is in Google Scholar, but let's be honest, what's not in Google Scholar? It is in the ICMJE. It is in DRJI. And it is in WCOSJ. I'm assuming by academia, they mean academia.edu, which is an academic social media site. So again, not an index. RefSeq, and I had to look this up because I was unfamiliar with it, 
is an academic search engine. So I'm guessing it's similar to Google Scholar, but I'm confused as to why it's on this list of indexes. Publons is a product from Web of Science. So remember, this journal is not indexed in Web of Science. And Publons is a place for researchers who do peer review to list the titles they've done peer review on. Um, so it's like a profile creation site. It's not an index. And Mendeley is used for citation management and networking. So I might have looked too far into this, just given my career and life choices, but this to me is a red flag. So yeah, about half of them have green check marks and they are listed there, but there's a lot of other things going on here. Also, as a librarian and somebody who works with electronic resources, when I went to this page, I expected all of these little boxes to hyperlink, and they didn't. That could just be me and my personal preference and experience, but I would have expected those to hyperlink to the site that they are referencing. So, you have your list of criteria. Before you submit, you should ask yourself some questions. Is it a journal that you read? If you don't read it, is someone else familiar with the journal? This could be a colleague, a coworker, a mentor, a supervisor. Depending on your discipline, is it indexed by one of the big reputable databases like Web of Science or PubMed or Scopus? And then is the journal a publisher on some type of predatory list or a blacklist? Again, one of these might not make your decision, but when you start adding them all up, that'll help you get to a better place for evaluation. There are a bunch of tools to help you. So there's Think, Check, Submit, which is for journals. Think, Check, Attend, which is for conferences. There are many lists of predatory journals and predatory publishers. And the Directory of Open Access Journals actually keeps a Google Doc that lists all the journals that claim to be in it, but aren't. There is so much information on the Scholarly Publishers Toolkit there is a whole page on avoiding predators. So you can see that infographic that I had pulled up at the beginning of this video. All of the criteria, the red flags and green flags that I went through are also listed on their pa this page, but there's a bunch more information if you scroll down. There's another video that was done during Open Access Week of 2015 that was done by another institution, not me. There are a bunch of links to those tools that can help, like Think, Check, and Submit and you'll find more resources on here. This concludes predatory publishing. Thank you.